There are many smartphone benchmarks that we can use in order to test phone performance. Today I will be using 10 powered Snapdragon 865 smartphones running Geekbench 5.1.1 for a run of three tests. We have the most expensive phone all the way on the left hand side and the cheapest all the way on the right hand side in order for you to compare performance to price. All prices have been converted from the current Chinese exchange rate. We've updated the software over here and we have LPDDR5 RAM across the board here with only 12 gig of RAM versions on the three phones on the left. The rest of them are all eight gigs. We have 120 hertz panels on the three phones all the way on the left hand side the rest are all 90 hertz with the exception of the 60 hertz redmi k30 pro and 144 hertz red magic 5g and iq neo 3 though the iq neo 3 is limited to ips lcd the rest of them all have amoled panels though it shouldn't really make a difference here since most of the runnings of geekbench 5 are all off screen we're going to be running full hd plus on all of the devices even though some of them are native qhd plus panels over here to keep things even we also have enabled all the their respective high performance or game Game, turbo modes, game space, whatever they'd like to call them. I have enabled all of them and luckily this time Shark Space has allowed us to add Geekbench 5 to Shark Space here where previously with Antutu it doesn't allow for that. We have the same Geekbench version 5.1.1 on all of the devices here. This is Technic and without further ado, let's go. We're gonna start over here by checking battery percentage and battery degrees in Celsius. So far the hottest is the Oppo, Find X2 Pro and the coolest is the Neo 3. Same can be said with CPU degree Celsius at the start. We'll compare this at the end of the test. We're just making sure that all of their performance modes are still enabled over here. We do have the fan enabled, the active cooling fan on the Red Magic 5G and we are also gonna put it in super performance mode to see how fast we can make this thing go. We're gonna be running our first test here which is just a CPU single core and multi core test over here. We'll get to the results after we run all the next one here is a GPU benchmark test with API OpenCL. Now we've switched it over to a Vulkan API over here to do a compute GPU graphics benchmark over here to see what happens and what is different between Open and Vulkan. First place over here after the first run in single core CPU department is the Redmi K30 Pro Zoom Edition. 10th place is the Oppo Find X2 Pro. The Oppo also got 10th place for multi-core and the iQoo Neo 3 got first place for multi-core over there. 10th place for the OnePlus 8 Pro when it comes to OpenCL GPU. GPU and Vulkan GPU API. And first place for Vulkan goes to the Mi 10 Pro. First place for OpenCL goes to the IQ Neo 3 over here. Really impressed with the IQ there, getting two wins in its first run of Geekbench 5.1.1. Gonna be doing the same test again. So starting here with CPU, and then we're gonna go into GPU benchmark OpenCL, as you guys can see. Then we're gonna switch to Vulkan after that. Remember that API means application program interface. So when we do the GPU comparisons with OpenCL and Vulkan, we are actually testing application program interface of all of the devices. Vulkan is a heavier benchmark to run in the GPU department than OpenCL and that's why the scores are slightly lower than that of OpenCL. First place when it comes to the CPU single core load here goes to the Redmi K30 Pro and matching that of the Mi 10 Pro in second place but still the same score over there. First place in multi-core is the iQoo Neo 3 once again. Tenth place in single core and multi-core is the Oppo Find X2 Pro once again. Tenth place in OpenCL is the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. 10th place in Vulkan is the OnePlus 8 Pro, very surprising there. First place for Vulkan goes to the Mi 10 Pro and first place for OpenCL GPU benchmark goes to the Redmi K30 Pro Zoom Edition. Now the third and final run of Geekbench version 5.1.1. We're gonna do the same thing, starting with CPU single and multi-core and then going to OpenCL Compute API and then after that doing Vulkan and then we'll compare all of the results at the end of the test with a very in-depth comparison. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's first get to the results of the third Geekbench version 5 run over here. Vulkan's first place goes to the Mi 10 Pro once again. Vulkan 10th place, last place the OnePlus 8 Pro again and the OnePlus also got 10th place dead last for OpenCL. First place for OpenCL goes to the Redmi K30 Pro and first place multi-core CPU goes to the iQ Neo 3 once again with first place going once again to the Redmi K30 Pro Zoom Edition with single core once again 10th place in single and multi-core performance here. Really disappointing with the CPU department on the Oppo Find X2 Pro. It's cheaper brother the Ace is doing a better job here. When it comes to battery percentage and battery degrees in Celsius, the biggest drain here goes to the OnePlus 8 Pro with minus 13%, the same of that of the Red Magic 5G, which does indeed have a smaller battery. We have a 9% drop in the S20 Ultra and the Black Shark 3 Pro, making them drain the least. And the most added degrees in Celsius here goes to the Neo 3, adding 6.3 degrees Celsius, as opposed to 2.3 degrees Celsius added to the coolest phone here, which is the Black Shark 3 Pro. Really impressive with the cooling over here. I thought the Red Magic would do slightly 
better with its internal cooling fan. When it comes to CPU heat over here, we only added two degrees Celsius on the S20 Ultra. It is also the coolest device here. The hottest devices are both the OnePlus 8 Pro and Xiaomi Mi 10 Pro, both adding the most in degrees Celsius here as well with six degrees Celsius. And the iQ Neo 3 also added six degrees Celsius, but it wasn't the hottest phone of the bunch over here. Now we're gonna head over to compare all of them. These are the total averages of all three tests, three single core runs, three multi-core runs, three open GL API GPU runs, and three Vulkan API GPU runs. In the single core department, when it comes to the CPU, first place gets allocated to the Redmi K30 Pro Zoom Edition with a score of 948. Not far behind is the Mi 10 Pro with second place with a score of 946. Last place here is the Oppo Find X2 Pro with a score of 779. And not far behind its smaller brother, the Oppo Ace 2 in ninth place with a score of 843. When it comes to the multi-core CPU department over here, when we are using all of the cores of the octa-core Snapdragon 865 processing chip, first place gets allocated to the iQ Neo 3 here with a score of 3,465. Not far behind that once again is the Mi 10 Pro with a score of 3,423 on average. 10th place, no surprise here, the Oppo Find X2 Pro with 2,820 points. And not far behind that once again, it's little brother, the Ace 2 with 2,968 points. When we get into graphics, processing units over here, also known as GPU. The first API overhead that we did was OpenCL, which is more graphics friendly, less as heavy as Vulkan. So for OpenCL, first place gets awarded to the Redmi K30 Pro Zoom Edition with 3,287 points. In second place, not far behind that is the iQ Neo 3, just with 10 points less than that of the K30 Pro Zoom Edition with 3,277 points. Dead last year is no longer the Oppo Brothers here, but this time the S20 Ultra is in ninth place with 3,016 points and the absolute dead last is the OnePlus 8 Pro. Very surprising here with its GPU department open CL here, 2,943 points. When we talk about Vulkan, we are talking about much higher graphics processing units running on the application program interface here. So it is no surprise to see that if the OnePlus 8 Pro came in last place with open CL, it would happen again with Vulkan getting 10th place with 2,651 points. Ninth place, the S20 Ultra, not far behind that, but still a good 200 points ahead of the OnePlus 8 Pro. Very surprising here. I do have the Snapdragon version of the S20 Ultra, but its performance is known to be dipped quite a bit to match that of the Exynos variant. Ninth place with 2,837 points. In second place, we have 3,685 points for the K30 Pro Zoom Edition. And in first place with Vulkan is surprisingly the Mi 10 Pro here with 3,696 points, performing even better than it did with OpenCL. I'm really impressed with all of these devices here. I must say that I am the most impressed with the Redmi K30 Pro Zoom Edition. I would definitely recommend the buy of the K30 Pro, though its lackluster 60 hertz panel is a massive drawback if you ask me. I would rather go for the cheaper iQ Neo 3, but once again, you're stuck to an IPS LCD display, which kind of sucks. So in my opinion here, the Mi 10 Pro looks like the best buy of the bunch for performance over price. Guys, I hope that you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. It took me a hell of a long time to make, so please make sure you hit that subscribe button. This is Technic, and I'll see you in the next one.